Well, hello, everybody. Uh, New Year is almost upon us. Uh, just another day or two before 2016 comes rolling in. Uh, just a reminder, until midnight on the 31st of December, 2015, that's Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, you can look on timeanddate.com to find out when that time is in your time zone. But until that time, I'm offering a 15% discount on most of my astrological services except the one question service if you order before midnight on the 31st. And that brings us to the topic at hand. This is the uh, third video in a series of videos about how astrology can help your life, in particular in 2016, mainly focusing on the main areas that everybody always asks about, such as career, how can I help my career in 2016? Or what uh, does my career look like for 2016? Relationships, the same way. In this particular video, we're going to focus on finances and what astrology can help you with in regards to your personal finances in 2016. How to take a problem and turn it around. And trust me, I know after the Christmas season, everybody usually has tons of debt piled on them a mile high in regards to, um, in regards to finances. So uh, I know that everybody's always interested in, in what can I do in regards to that. And when it boils down to finances, it's usually uh, a few different things, or one of a few different things that cause the problem. And I'm going to um, speak about what those things are, and also the areas of the chart that they're associated with in terms of, of the houses. There are also planets involved too, but let's focus right now on the houses. But usually, the main problems tend to boil down to debt that one already has or may have recently incurred. Um, expense, one is either uh, is potentially spending too much, uh, may not have a lot of debt, but has been spending uh, too much, and that can create a problem in personal finances. And also just generally a lack of income. Uh, due to a change in circumstances. Sometimes that can also create a financial hardship. So we want to take a look at a couple of different examples astrologically and see if we can identify what the problem is and see if we can figure out how to help the individual. Now, I just want to say I'm not going to get too technical in this. The last couple of videos, I haven't been that successful with that because us astrologers get carried away. But I'm just going to focus on the bare bones where a simple astrological um, explanation is uh, necessary. I will offer that for your assistance. So let's get into it by going into the astrology software. See you there. Here I am over here. Uh, my head's a little bit smaller, and maybe that's a good thing to do is to shrink my head a little bit. Sometimes it feels like it's going to explode. So sometimes it's good to shrink it down a little bit. So I thought I'd shrink my head and put it over here for you. Um, so here we go. We've got a particular chart here for somebody born on the 18th of February. 1953. I did a little bit of rectification on this chart because this person was born close to uh, the cusp between two signs, as you can uh, likely see. Uh, so things weren't matching up with their birth time, so I did um, some adjustment, and, and now everything seems really smooth here. But this is a, a bit of a challenging situation that we're looking at here. The person is presently in a particular period of time. That's uh, Jupiter, Saturn, um, Mahadasha, and Tardasha period. Now what that means is that those two planets are particularly highlighted in the individual's life. And everything that they are associated with begins to come to fruition during this particular point of an individual's life. Well, just off the top of our head, we can see that you know Jupiter is a natural indicator for income and for uh, finances. Saturn is a natural obstructor. So a person being in a Jupiter-Saturn planetary period is by its very nature 
going to create some difficulties with finances. Uh, if we look at their main birth chart, which we're going to look at a few other things too, we can see that one of the um, house cusps involved is the sixth house cusp. And I didn't talk about all those things before. The sixth is related to debt. The twelfth is related to expense. Uh, the eleventh relates to the uh, income that we would like to have, our desires. Um, so the eleventh can relate to to, it relates mainly to gains, but in terms of finances, it relates to those gains that we want to have. Um, the second house deals with uh, wealth, but it's also mainly about the type of wealth that we have on hand to deal with our needs, taking care of our needs. That's the uh, second house idea. So that's the difference between second house finances and 11th house finances. 11th house is the um, gains that you want, whereas the second house relates to the gains that you need. So when we see a sixth house factor present, that's going to show that there are some problems related to debt. Interestingly enough, in this person's particular case, uh, there was, uh, were also some health issues that were involved in the circumstance. And we can see that Jupiter deals with the eighth house, which is one of the health-related houses. Uh, the sixth house, the eighth house are both uh, associated with, uh, with health. So some problems with debt relating to health. And if we come over, and we're going to take a look at two different charts, because in order to look at finances, you need to look at two different particular charts um, that relate to finances especially. The first of those is called the horror chart. That's related to the liquid assets that you have on hand to take care of your needs, amongst other things, right? But it's primarily about taking care of your needs um, in regards to finances. The Chaturtamsha is related to the fixed assets that you have on hand to take care of, um, you know, money in the bank that can sometimes help to filter down in order to take care of your needs. But interestingly enough, we can sometimes see a discrepancy between those two charts. We can see somebody who has a, uh, a D4 chart that is really strong. That means they've got a lot of fixed assets, but their horror chart is really weak, which means they have a lot of fixed assets, but it really just feels like they're barely getting by. And that's not um, necessarily the case in this particular instance. As a matter of fact, it's different. The person has a very strong uh, D2, and the uh, D4 is not quite as strong as the D2. But that's, let's not get sidetracked. So taking a look, let's focus on the horror first. And we'll see with this particular instance that uh, Jupiter is related to a lot of different things. That's what all these different numbers relate to. Okay, we were talking about uh, the eighth house and how that can be associated with uh, health related things. The fifth house is also about making uh, wise choices with your liquid assets. And um, Jupiter is also associated with both the 11th, uh, the gains the person wants to have or the future of their gains. Uh, in relation to the horror chart, it's about being able to take care of their needs from from the future onwards, okay? There are a lot of other things here too, but again, I don't want to bombard you with technical details. And the second house is also there, about taking care of the individual's needs. Both of those are there. Saturn, we can see the uh, Saturn relationship to uh, debt surfacing for the individual. And if we examine the situation a little bit further, we can see that because of Saturn, we see these two numbers. Basically what they mean is the person's going to be really intensively focusing their energy on their needs and putting their needs above all other things, taking care of their financial needs in this particular instance, which was a concern for this person. And when we look at uh, Jupiter in relation to this, we can see some debt and a lot of effort that's going to need to be put into the situation, some expense, um, and also uh, a shift perhaps in perspective in relation to one's finances um, and one's beliefs about finances. But if we look at both Jupiter and Saturn in this chart, we'll see that both of them have a big zero next to them. Uh, if we go across from Jupiter to Saturn, Jupiter doesn't impact Saturn. If we go across from Saturn to Jupiter, it doesn't impact Jupiter in terms of uh, mathematical impact in relation to this. But what this means is this person's having a hard time getting by. 
they're having a hard time meeting their needs, they're going through a lot of difficult transition, and they have a lot of debt in their life. Now, ordinarily in a circumstance like this, I would look for some of these uh, planets that have green numbers in relation to Jupiter, like the Moon or Mars. But as we can see, both of those planets that are helping Jupiter hurt Saturn. <laughs> and that's not good. So yes, the person could, you know, focus on um, perhaps taking out a loan, which is an eighth house matter, and they could use um, Mars um, in order to, um, they could focus on their, could use Mars to potentially help them with the situation. Mars is not a really good planet to help. I think we'd focus more on the moon. They could try to curb their expenses, dealing with their expenses, so just naturally dealing with their expenses is going to be a wise choice and help with their future income, but it's going to mean that there are a lot of debts and their relationships will likely suffer as a result. So, that, so that's not a happy equation. Um, interestingly enough, we've also got the seventh cusp involved here. Because of something in astrology called Baba, Baba then basically the seventh house can relate to uh, home as well because it's the fourth house uh, which the fourth house is related to home so it's the fourth from the fourth so that can relate to home instead so we can see that it's not going to help one's uh, particular home situation this particular period that the individual is in right so i want to just focus on that okay and let's go up to the chapter tamsha which amongst other things besides fixed assets it's also related to home environment. Let's look at the same thing that we looked at here. Again, I'll try not to go into too many technical details, but I do want to give you an idea too. So Jupiter in this particular chart is associated with basically the same house cusps. Uh, one's wealth, taking care of one's needs and making wise decisions in regards to one's finances. Interestingly enough, Jupiter is also something in this particular case called the Matrikarika. Okay, that relates to one's home environment. And Jupiter is placed in the fifth position, um, or basically is rules the fifth and eighth uh, Rashis, or signs, from itself. Okay, so what that means is the individual may consider during this time letting go of their home, which was a particular consideration. Um, looking at Saturn, Saturn also has a fourth house association too. So the person may consider, you know, letting go of their home, putting effort into selling their house, which is something that's coming up for the individual. So again, we go here, and there's no strength for Jupiter, and there's no strength for Saturn. How are we going to help this individual, right? It's really difficult. We try to use the moon to help them. So we try to use uh, selling uh, the home, uh, dealing with one's debt, in order to help Jupiter take care of the needs in relation to fixed assets. But on some levels, that's actually going to, um, to hurt Saturn. That's going to uh, you know, likely lead to um, some difficulty or motivation with finances. Obviously, the person, <coughs> pardon me, would be letting go of their home. So that's a difficult circumstance, too. If we bring this particular chart up, we can see that as Saturn is being hurt by the moon, the moon would actually be able to help Saturn. So it's not really a bad idea for this person to sell their house. There's just some difficulty that's involved. I took a preliminary look by another technique. I'm not going to go into the details. But it looks like the person stands a greater chance of selling their home um, between February and May of next year. Actually, what I was seeing was that uh, February really kind of starts things in motion in relation to doing that, but May brings an opportunity for that to really happen uh, in terms of uh, looking at a technique involving Jamini astrology, which could get a little complex, and I don't want to get into that. I just want to keep it simple here. But if we come back to this particular situation in general, and we look at what's going to happen once this person is in uh, later on into 2016 after March, they will actually be in their Jupiter Mercury Dasha and Dasha period. So let's see if there is any uh, greater hope for them in regards to that. <clears throat> 
let's start with the Hora chart, okay? And if we look at the Hora chart, we can see that Mercury rules the two financially related houses, the 11th and the 2nd. And in this particular instance, we've also got a Mercury that you know has some strength with which to deal with the situation. So this can help with the individual's needs. But if we take a closer look, we also see that while Mercury is helping those two areas, it's actually hurting Jupiter. So this can put the person through you know, some difficult transition and make them feel like they may not be making uh, the wisest and most prudent choices, or it may feel like, like a gamble to them. Okay, so the person may not feel uh, that happy about doing this particular thing. So then when we take a look up at the um, Chatra Tantra, which would be related to home as well too, let's take a look at the two areas that are associated with that. Jupiter, of course, rules those same areas. Mercury rules the 8th and the 11th. The 8th is going to bring a transition. Uh, the eleventh is about dealing with um, with the future in relation to things, one's hopes, desires, uh, things along those lines. And again, we have a uh, a good Mercury. Uh, Mercury can bring some income from uh, the home, which is related to Jupiter on some levels. And um, what else can happen? Jupiter, in relation to that, is going to bring, you know, some transition in relation to the home. So all in all, it doesn't, you know, look um, that wonderful, but also it looks better than what the individual is dealing with on the other level. Let's take a look at the uh, mutual agenda in the horror chart, see what else is going on with that. So if we look at Mercury here, we already saw the 11th and the 2nd. So um, another thing that the second house is related to is ideas, right? Um, the wealth of one's uh, cognizance. The first house is related to cognizance, or, or you know, one's capacity to uh, to think or to perceive oneself. Right. Uh, the second house is the value of that cognizance. So that's ideas. The fifth house is about using one's intelligence wisely. So here we see you know a wise decision potentially in regards to uh, home environment. Right. Um, when we look at Jupiter in relation to that, yes, Jupiter is going to um, hurt. So we're seeing both simultaneously help with income and also a situation where one is going to feel like financially there is a difficulty in relation to it. So in looking at this situation wholly, especially using the other um, techniques which I did, which I'm not going to go into depth with here because doing so would just be too... Um, too much like bombarding you with science, so to speak. Um, if you wish to schedule a consultation along these lines, I can explain it to you as we go along. But what I was picking up on with the individual by looking at other techniques is that around that time, uh, probably between the 13th of May and the 20th of May of 2016, somewhere around there, the individual will have an opportunity to deal with their home, to let go of their home, to sell it. But they're not, there's going to be some difficulty that's involved with it. Part of them isn't going to want to let go because it's not going to feel like it's the perfect idea that they really want to have. But should they do so, it is something which is going to be beneficial for their happiness in the long run. And it is something that is going to be beneficial for their finances and, uh, in terms of helping them to get out of this particular hole that they've gotten themselves in in regards to finances. Some other things in the equation, I don't know if the individual has children. If they, if they do have children, their children may not be too happy about them letting go of the home. But again, it's a thing, as we were seeing earlier, they need to take care of their own needs first and put their needs above the needs of other people. So this is just a really simple example, or maybe it's a complex example, of how astrology can help an individual to deal uh, with their finances through looking ahead at what's on, what's on the horizon in regards to finances. One can solve particular problems in relation to that. So I hope this has been helpful to you. And just a reminder as well, if you want to, you can cl uh, click the link below. That'll take you to the Contact Me page of my website if you would like to schedule a look ahead at 2016 for yourself in regards to any area in life. There is a 15% discount until midnight. 
31st of December. Thank you. Bye now.